Another cons consistent effort from uh, Mr. McClure. Yeah, Cade was very good, but not, not just successful, you know, getting the outs and not giving up a lot of runs. I was, I was just pleased with how well he fielded his position. You know, all the, the little things you have to do to be a successful pitcher and wasn't our best night offensively, uh, but we manufactured enough runs. We had a lot of runners on base. Uh, we couldn't get as many big hits as we needed, but we did enough and we played really clean defense. That was the challenge going into tonight's game was, you know, how well can we play on the defensive side? And we did a little bit of everything, made some nice catches, uh, made some nice plays. And, and like I said, I thought Cade was the highlight of the night because of how well he fielded his position. He said, guys, kind of jokingly, that talk about he's the most improved guy in that area. I mean, how much has oh, he yeah. come from last year? No, but we, we've been saying it all year. I mean, we holler it out every week in our in our PFP, you know, our pitchers uh, fielding practice series. And, you know, you just part of growing up, part of learning how to succeed as a pitcher at this level. And even into the next level of, of pro baseball, you're going to have to do all the little things. So, um, and he's done. He should, he should have always been good at it because he's an athletic kid, a basketball player, but he wasn't great, you know, as a freshman. And there's a lot being thrown at you. And, and uh, the game seems to really speed up on you. But the more comfortable you get and the more we practice it, the more you realize, you know, it's not as hard as, as we make it sometimes. And um, so there'll be a pitcher next year that hopefully will get most improved and he'll be doing what, what Cade's doing now. The one, if he's not 6'7", he probably doesn't catch that. So that helped a little bit, doesn't it? No, no doubt. But it just is athleticism. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to get to that with runners in scoring position and two outs, I mean, those are the plays that kill you sometimes when, you know, the other team's not supposed to get a hit and you let a guy get on base. Um, but he just, he nixed all those tonight. Midweek, and he even said he's like it's not. He knows it's not the competition that the weekend guys have been facing, but to be so consistent for ten, basically I mean, what ten or eleven games, so yeah. now is it is pretty. It's a it's, it's a bonus. It's still good teams. I mean, he's he's you know, I mean, he's faced uh, you know SEC team twice. He's faced the Big Ten team. You know, he faced Western. Um, you know, an AAC team. I mean, he's facing. They're winning the AAC right now. That team. Um, with Houston and Tulane and Central Florida and, and heck, East Carolina and all the program, I mean, good baseball program. So um, I, I don't ever, we don't ever look down on the opponent and say, well, he's not pitching against uh, the guys we play on the weekend because uh, they're all good. The parity and, and the goal, as we realize, is he's going to probably pitch a game in the ACC tournament and could have to pitch a game in a regional. Going on the road now for a big uh, trip. To up first is, is North Carolina. How key is this series for you guys? Well, you know, the games seem to get bigger and bigger because there's only, a, you know, so few left. Uh, six of our nine are on the road. And, uh, you know, North Carolina is really good. And, and what we've seen in this league this year is the home teams have, have taken advantage of being at home. So somebody's got to go on the road and do something special. And we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to play good baseball this weekend. You always talk about the first inning and winning. How, I mean, it really, in some of your losses, it has been the first couple innings where you've gotten kind of gotten off to a bad start. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's the goal for every team. Every team would like to, to get ahead and let their pitcher settle in and let the offense settle in. So uh, it's one of those things. You address it. Kids are trying to do their best in the first, but you, know, you can't you can't over harp on it. You can't put too much pressure on it. You mentioned defense earlier, and it seems like almost every time you guys come out on the field, Something spe you know, special. You can really tell how special some of these kids are. Devin Harrison's been turning up the plate, but a couple of great plays from him. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't take any of those plays for granted. Those yeah. drop step balls, uh, infielders going back, making catches when you're you're running towards and a person running towards you. It's it's different when an outfielder's running towards the wall because that's a stationary object. But when an infielder's running back and there's a guy full speed running at you, there's some there's a lot of infielders that, that get cold feet. They, they, they don't like that, but. You see how comfortable Devin is. He's, he's loud. He calls it off. And, and the outfielders know. The outfielders know when he drops step, goes after it, he calls it, just let him catch it. And we did a nice job of communicating on those tonight. And, you know, Blake Tiberi, you know, could have almost made the catch of the year. Yeah. I challenged him before the game. I, I challenged the outfield. I, I want to see some great catches. You know, the season's running out. And, uh, and Blake almost made it there. I just, I just wanted to. Uh,